This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. The Bahamas seeing an 18% increase in major crimes this year, according to the Minister of National Security, Wayne Monroe, on Tuesday. This much revealed during his budget contribution as he touched on the high rate of homicides in the country, noting that recent trends in violence are attributed to narrowing economic and educational opportunities made so by the COVID-19 pandemic. Not surprisingly, the Bahamas, like our regional counterpart, has experienced a high rate of violence, particularly homicides committed with firearms. The trends have been attributed to the narrowing economic and educational opportunities that will worsen due to the COVID-19 pandemic and its mitigating actions taken by regional governments. According to the minister, there has been an increase in murders with 58 so far this year, compared to 46 for the same period last year. He stated that the increase is attributable or attributable to New Providence and Grand Bahama. Crime on other family islands has decreased. He said that the illegal smuggling of firearms and ammunition by transnational criminal organizations and the sale of weapons by local gang members is said to play into the harrowing statistics as well, with the sale resulting in the easy access of weapons to civilians that seek to obtain them for nefarious reasons. The minister sought to remind citizens of the Bahamas that the country does not manufacture firearms or ammunition. He said the government continues to work hand in hand with the United States and other regional counterparts to rid the streets of the Bahamas of illegal firearms. Minister of Health and Wellness Michael Dalva says the country has fended off against the recent spike in COVID-19 cases quite well, adding that he's pleased to report this week they've seen a reduction in cases. Still, the minister encourages persons to practice safety protocols and get vaccinated, if not so already. Uh, as you monitor the numbers, you will see that some days we have higher numbers, some days it's lower numbers. One of the good things is that the cases that are showing up at the hospital are not cases suffering directly from COVID. They are incidental findings with individuals with other issues. Last month, COVID-19 cases quadrupled compared to the previous month. The Bahamas jumped from 287 in April to 1,181 in May. Minister Darvel revealed the possibility of lifting mask mandates for the family islands is being considered, being that most COVID cases have been discovered in New Providence. He added there will be a commitment meeting where this will be discussed. Uh, with the spikes, that are ongoing and the peaks and troughs that we are seeing with COVID, uh, we are uh, on the verge of, we are, we're gonna function with caution. And uh, the committee will discuss it this week and a decision will be made. But uh, we, we feel that the mass mandate with what we are seeing uh, should remain in place until we feel that we are out of the clear. When asked if there has been consideration of pre-implementing COVID testing for those traveling from New Providence to the Family Islands, Minister Darwell said at this time, no. However, they are watching the numbers. With flooding being a major point of contention over the past few days following consistent torrential rains and the Atlantic hurricane season already forecasted to play host to at least 12 potential major hurricanes, preparations are already underway to tackle the issue, in particular flood-prone areas. One particular MP, Leslie Miller Bryce, Member of Parliament for Seabreeze, following heavy rains over the weekend, took action and shares how she plans to further impact her constituents in dealing with this long-standing issue. So we're just here in the Seabreeze community today giving out sandbags. When we got that heavy rainfall two to three days ago, it was important for my team and I to drive in the back here just to see, you know, what the needs of the residents were. You know, coming in the back here, it's the rain is and, 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 and the high levels of water uh, is truly overwhelming to the residents. Once it starts to rain, some residents can't go to work. They can't come home. That's truly unacceptable. There has to be something uh, that we have to make some sort of effort um, to alleviate this burden from the residents that reside in, in, in the back here in this community. But today we've decided to do something uh, that's quick. Uh, we brought uh, sandbags. We've been bagging sandbags for the last two days. Um, we've delivered 500 sandbags so far. We just want to make sure that all the residents get what they need. 
The Seabreeze MP notes that the sandbags are just the start for her efforts in the community this hurricane season. She says that she and her team have been in constant conversation with the Works and Utilities Minister, Alfred Sears, to ensure that the Seabreeze area, which has for years been victim of flooding, uh, is not overlooked in the Ministry of Works Utilities new flood remediation initiatives. Just as a start, just as something, you know, just to show people that we are, that we do care, that we know what the needs are and that we're going to follow through with it. I have been speaking with the Minister of Works and the Permanent Secretary and they both agree that there has to be something uh, done in the back air. Um, I, I, I'm going to continue to push and agitate and sit on the steps if I have to of the Ministry of Works just to ensure that we get some drains in the back here, um, in the back of Hannah Road. It's important. You know, Hannah Road has been faced with this dilemma for so many years and they've gone, you know, neglected. And now it's time for someone to show them real representation and that's why I'm here today. The Seabreeze community, particularly Hannah Road and the surrounding areas, was one of the hardest hit communities here in New Providence during the passage of Hurricane Matthew back in 2016. And according to Ms. Miller Bryce, she and her team will not rest until the community has reprieve. She's being heralded as an illustrious lady of our country and a patriot extraordinaire for shattering the glass ceiling for women to be an integral part of holding a seat in the Bahamian Parliament. And that's Dame Janet Bostwick. It was June 10, 1982 that Janet Bostwick became the first female to be selected to the Halls of Parliament in celebrating the 40th anniversary of a rare female candidate in the general elections of 1982. Engliston Member of Parliament Glennis Hannah Martin says Dame Janet's election victory to the House of Assembly was an important day in our national history. The election of Janet Boswick represented a shattering of what had theretofore been a glass ceiling and indeed a busting through of solid barrier to women and would represent an inspirational achievement to girls and women everywhere and in every sphere including myself. <laughs> she was the manifestation of the possible. Her attainment was the culmination of years of collective struggle by the many women who came before her, most notably those giants of the suffragette movement, a pantheon of courageous and visionary women who confronted the status quo, demanding equal voting rights for women. In February of 1961, a bill to enable women to vote was enacted with effect to June of 1962. Bahamian women voted for the first time in November of the same year. But it wasn't until 20 years later that Mrs. Bostwick would have been elected to become the first female political voice and representative in the lower chambers. She served as the Member of Parliament for the Yamacraw constituency for 20 years. Mrs. Bostwick served as the first female Attorney General in the Bahamas. This also marked the first for the region. She championed family law, women's and children's rights, and played a pivotal role in bringing about significant changes to the Matrimonial Causes Act in 1978, the Affiliation Proceedings Act in 1981, and sponsoring the Female Employees Grant of Maternity Leave Act in 1988, and the Sexual Offenses and Domestic Violence Act 1991, the Inheritance Act, and the Status of Children Act. In 1977, Mrs. Bostwick served as a senator under the Free National Movement. Once elected to Parliament, she served as Minister of National Insurance, Housing and Social Services, Minister of Justice and Immigration. And while serving as Attorney General, Mrs. Bostwick also served as Minister of Foreign Affairs and Minister with Responsibility for Women's Affairs. Mrs. Bostwick was also the first female to act as Prime Minister and served as the Deputy to the Governor General, also also singing the praises of Dame Janet was opposition leader Michael Pintard. The Right Honorable Janet Gwyneth Boswick is a legend in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Her career is filled with significant firsts and her footsteps have paved a radiant road for other Bahamians, both women and men, to follow. Dame Janet is the consummate politician and her accomplishments in this field have inspired many of us throughout the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. 
She is admired and respected as a champion for the empowerment of women, not only here at home and in this region, but internationally. It is with great joy and pride that we, in the Free National Movement, once again raise our voices in conjunction with our colleagues to celebrate this bulwark of our party, this lioness of liberty and equality, this warrior for women who has given so much to our country and our party. Dame Janet will be celebrated this coming Friday, June 10th, 40 years to the date of her election. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jorino Saunders. Thanks for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.